So a while back I decided I wasn't going to spend my time in grad school just reporting back to YouTube about every crazy idea I found in a scientific article, right? Uh, I realize that the behavioral sciences have a very big problem with uh, repeatability and, and verifiability in a lot of the notions that have come out of it, especially in uh, evolutionary psychology, but I didn't feel like uh, presenting this to the world in a uh, condescending fashion on YouTube because I, I don't want to bring that sort of crowd to my life anymore, right? But I found something that just blew me away and I, I wanted to share it with you guys. Now, I wasn't looking for this sort of article or this sort of experience that I had. Specifically, I was looking for a convergence between suicide, race, and hair color in academic peer-reviewed articles, okay? I was actually trying to narrow it down to... Um, suicide percentages by race and then white race broken down by hair color so I can see if redheaded people it, that are considered white are uh, separated out for a separate uh, percentage in, in those suicide uh, rates in, in whatever country. I just I was I was curious because of something else I read in a class, okay? That's what I was looking for, not what I found, okay? So, I kept looking at the titles of these articles that would pop up, and nothing really looked like it was going to show what I was looking for, right? I'd just keep on going down, 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 and then I came to this one right here. This stood out to me. November 8, 2016. The day I became a white clinician from the journal Psychology and Behavioral Sciences Collection, right? For, from the Journal of Clinical Psychology, right here. Okay, so it's got a DUI number and everything. It's legit been published. So I clicked on it uh, out of just morbid curiosity because i i realized well that's the the day that uh trump was elected and uh it was exactly what i thought in in the in this journal that's supposed to be about uh scientific studies in in behavioral fields it's just an opinion piece masquerading as a set of uh case studies of conversations had between this clinician and uh, a few clients, which are completely anonymized. But um, it's bad. It's really, really bad. So uh, the abstract goes, when Donald Trump became president of the United States, I discovered that my clients who identified as black saw me as a white clinician. That came with a host of nefarious attributes. So on that day, that was the day that all of her black clients went, Hey, wait a second. You're white, and we don't like white people as much as we used to because Donald Trump got elected. That was the day. It wasn't any day before that that they realized that you were white, right? So uh, a little bit farther down, um, in the introduction, that's exactly what she's saying. It happened overnight. My neutral olive, ever so slightly darkish skin, turned white both in self-perception and the eyes of the clients who identified as black. 
So she's she's not really white. She's olive because we're making grades of how white somebody is or, or how black someone is, right? She she considers herself olive, not white. And it would be understandable to uh, assume if she was, say, albino white, that she might be a racist like Trump. But she's olive white, so she's got genetically maybe some difference in her than pale, pale white people. That's that's what it, I'm, I am getting as the implication here from what she's writing, right? So uh, there's a bunch of case studies in it, right? And a bunch of opinion where she's actually just making up a uh, hypothetical conversation. Um, and uh, let's see. Right here in the conclusion, it says, uh, not Olive this time, okay? Not Olive. It says, I'm a beige woman who does not wish to identify as white, but it's my responsibility to deal with the fact that I may be seen as such. So I was very curious, because there's no picture of her in this article, uh, of course, you know, pictures in scientific articles might be photocopied and scanned into something with a black and white photocopier, so you might not be able to see the, the specific grades of whiteness that she's talking about. But I was I was curious, so I used the internets, right? And so I looked her up, and uh, here is the About Me from uh, Wesleyan University. Uh, that, that shows her picture. That's who wrote this. This is the woman who at one point says, I'm not white, I'm olive colored, and I'm not white, I'm beige. <laughs> right? Holy shit. Okay? But one picture on one website, that might not do it justice, so just the, the Google image links right here to that person right there. Okay. That is the person who said it was the day Trump got elected that I became white. That was the day that all of my clients realized that I was white. Oh my fucking god oh my and this is a phd okay this is a doctor right and i just feel one bad for anyone who has to be subjected to her opinions in a classroom and two uh whatever institute that gave her a phd should have its credentials revoked because holy shit okay the, I, I get trump got elected and a whole bunch of people became crazy deranged because we didn't expect it. I don't like Trump, right? I like being progressive on race issues, too. This shit is dumb. It is really, really dumb. And it got published in a journal. Holy shit. And I don't like putting this kind of shit out on the internet to bring disrepute to the behavioral sciences. But holy shit. Okay, people realized that you were white before Trump got elected. It, it wasn't just a magical night where the racism of one politician magically made everyone whiter that night. No, no, those issues were present the entire time. And your refusal to realize that, to me, says you should have never been a PhD candidate in the first place. Seriously, somewhere along the lines, you should have learned better. Holy shit. <laughs>